Welcome. Thank you very much for stopping by today. Today I am taking a look at this Stamping Pro stamp platform. To give you a little bit of background of why I'm looking at this is that I typically use the Misty stamping tool and I love the Misty. I think it's a great tool. I do find that the price point is a little high, especially when I'm trying to maybe go to other places, maybe I'm traveling. I don't do a whole lot of traveling anymore, but I do find that if I am going over to maybe a friend's house or a relative's house and going to stamp, I like having a stamping platform, but I do not like that things tend to disappear. And Misty is just a higher end item that I really can't afford to have it disappear when I go somewhere. The reason that I'm looking at an alternate stamp platforms is I'm looking for something that would be a little bit more reasonable that if something happened to it, I wouldn't cry and weep buckets over. So that's why I'm looking at some alternate stamping pads. This one is a little bit different in design, I can tell. It looks like it's not a hinge. It looks like it's got some pegs. So I'm really not sure how it's going to work as far as if it's going to be a comparable or even an acceptable alternative to the Misty, but let's take a look. I will very quickly just add on that I was not provided this. I, I purchased this outright, so none of this is a paid promotion. Um, one way or the other, I'm going to give my honest opinion about it. So let me take a look and take this out. The packaging is fairly simple. It's got basic packaging to it. Looks like it's got a couple of magnets, which is nice, and they've got a, a nice little uh, thing. Normally with the just the disc magnets, I have to put my own tape on them to keep them in place so that I can pull them up. So that's an interesting, that's nice that they have that. It looks like it's got a nice lucite board, and it, these are a little springy which is interesting. And then these have got embedded magnets that line up here so that you know that you're lined up correctly. And then you can squish down and push down. So this reminds me a little bit of the Fiskars stamping pad that has the little sponges on the side uh, without having it be as lined up. It looks like you can hinge this a little bit. It fits in this little channel. And then when you go to push it down, you get it into place and then go down. So let's take a look. I am going to try a few different stamp sets. I wanted to make sure that I kind of put this through the ringer a little bit. I did pick my stamp sets deliberately. So I wanted from a variety of different companies. So I've got my favorite things, Altenew, Stampers Anonymous, which this you might recognize as maybe a Tim Holtz type design, and then Lawn Fun. Lawn Fawn has got usually simple lines. Stampers Anonymous, I like it because they're the, the more thick foam. I wanted something that was very solid to see because these I tend to use a stamping tool uh, or can't really stamp without using a stamping tool because they are so, they need to be so dark and they usually require several stampings. And then I wanted to do my favorite things, um, or I wanted to do just a basic stamp type thing. So I'm going to be using Memento ink for this. That's typically the ink that I use, and I'm going to reach over and get some paper and just do a little bit of stamping. Let me go ahead and start to position this. Right away, I can tell you it's maybe a good thing and a bad thing. With other stamping tools that I've used, there's been a bottom channel. And maybe I can show you with a different piece of paper, but there's usually a bottom channel so that you have the X and Y axis that you're putting things in so that you know that you can line up exactly the way that you want it if you're going to do repeating stamping, especially for layered stamping. This does not have that bottom layer. It's completely open except for this section over here. That can be a good and a bad thing. I can see myself, if I were doing longer cards or longer stamping, that that might be something that's nice to be able to overhang the paper in some respects. So that's kind of an interesting thing. I'm going to go ahead and put some stamps down. 
I'm going to try Lawn Fun. And Lawn Fun, one of the things I love about Lawn Fun is their little images, but I also love the fact that their images are super easy to color. So I find that their their simplistic images are have a lot of open space in most of them, and they give you that opportunity to be able to color quite easily into the items. So I'm going to just go ahead and put down a few of these. I hate wasting paper, so I probably am going to try to stack these so that I can get pretty much most of them on here and go through that process. I love these little chicks. This is, um, by the way, everything that I'm using here today I will have in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these, there are some really cute sets that I'm going to be stamping with today. So I'm going to just put these down, see if it picks them up. Looks like it is. Looks like it picked them up pretty well. So now they are embedded in there. You know, one of the things too that I think I'm going to like about this is that with the Misty stamping tool, you they are certainly connected. So one of the nice things about this is that you have a little bit of play or freedom to do this. So now I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up. And I will tell you, it may be that bottom channel may be an issue. Although I'm going to line it up on a particular tick mark there, I maybe have to go a little bit higher. All right, so that bottom mark may be something that it takes a little getting used to, the fact that there's not a bottom mark. Make sure that it's lined up with that. All right, and the difference here is instead of having to push it down and having to swing it, you just have to push it down like this. So let's see how this goes. All right. Up. I'm seeing a little bit of spread down here. Um, it looks like the it's moving just a little bit, and if you'll notice, there's a little bit of more of a of a an item there. So that was my first attempt. I'm going to flip this over, kind of call a do over. I do this a lot. I work with 110 pound cardstock simply because it allows me, if I make a mistake to be able to have a do-over. All right, so now that I've got this lined up, and it's going to take some getting used to, to understand that instead of flipping and having it go straight, you're going to push down. So this time I'm going to push down slowly and then do my rubbing. Get that contact and then do my rubbing. And see what happens. Okay, that was better. That was a better adhesion. It still needs to be stamped again, and so now this is going to be the proof in the pudding. So this may require a little bit of a different technique than the other, which is interesting. All right, so now again, I'm just going to place it. I'm not going to worry about it, you know, getting it 100%, because hopefully when it's placed, then I'll go down, and now I'll rub and see if I can get that adhesion. Let's see how that goes and let it pop up. You know, this is really pretty good. I am a little bit stunned. So this was my second attempt, very clean. This was my first attempt and you can, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like there's a little bit of slipping, especially over here where when I was initially pressing down, I was moving it a little bit. But this is pretty darn good. Now the proof would be in the pudding of, of actually doing, seeing how this handles with the more solid stamps and with these stamps that are a little bit more substantial. So let me clean these up a little bit and let me go through and try a different stamp. I'm going to just put these aside, pull these off. 
and we'll see. But so far, I am pretty impressed with this. It's different. It definitely requires a different handling to be able to do this. And what I will probably end up doing regardless is I will probably put some ink in here so that these tick marks are a little darker. It's hard, I know, for you probably to see, but there is a ruler in uh, inches and in millimeters here on this. And I don't know if you can see that or not because it's so faint. But what I probably will do is put some black paint in that. If you If you put some black acrylic paint in there and then move your hand over it, it'll go into the to the crevices to highlight that and that will allow me to be able to see a little bit better. So this time I'm going to take a look at using some of the more thick stamps and see how that works. So this will be interesting. I'm going to pick one that's fairly, well they're all pretty, pretty much the same, but I'm going to pick one that is fairly intense, meaning it's got a lot going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my thing. And again, that difference is, is that I'm not having to worry about flipping it over, per se. Although with this one, it looks like it does touch the paper. So I'm going to... I'm going to see if I can get a little closer to this, because I want to see if I can get two. No, I'm not going to be able to get two on that, I don't think. So we'll just go with the center. We'll bite the bullet use the paper. With these sticker stamps, I probably am going to have to not just flip it over. I'm going to have to probably go in and do it. But let's see. Let's see how it works. And I don't know that I've ever used this stamp before. I may not have ever stamped with this stamp, so it may need to be stamped several times just to allow for that. So in this case, I'm going to be a, bit, a little bit more precise on how I line it up. Now again, I'm pushing straight down and then I'm going to go ahead and rub. Straight down and then rub. So it's a bit of a different situation. All right, so that's pretty good, although it's a little light in the center. So I am going to stamp it a second time and let's see how this works. These are a little bit more tricky because they almost touch they almost touch the stamping pad before you even put it down because of the thickness of them. But let's see how it works. So that one got a little muddy. So uh, I don't know that I like them a lot for these thicker stamps. Now, the good news is for me, I don't have that many of these. I don't have many of these rubber foam stamps. Most of the stamps that I use in my stamping tools are the thinner kind of cling stamps. Um, so I don't know that it's a huge deal for me, but I'm not a huge fan of them for this. Now, if you're single stamping, I think it works good. But if you do have to go back in and stamp it again, I'm sewing a little bit of overbleed. And the reason being is, is that when you go to turn it, it's almost exactly right there. So now this in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just do the initial ninjas because I'm really looking for this. This ultra new set is a is a what do you call it? A layered stamp set. But I'm not going to really do the layering on it yet. I just really want to know if these are something that you can effectively do a lot of stamps with, like uh, several stamps. So I'm going to go ahead and just put two little guys on here. These are ninjas. And I'm going to pick them up like I normally would. So we'll pick them up, position my paper. I kind of like the fact that this is completely removable because you can you can do whatever you need to. One of the things I run into sometimes with space is that my my craft table gets overrun with all of my projects and my actual working space gets very small. So sometimes having a big old misty is a little bit of a challenge. And again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just position that on there. So I haven't pushed down yet. And I'm going to then straight down, push down. And then from there, I'm going to do my rubbing. 
So straight down. And then I'm going to pick it up and see how it goes. And as you can see, this is definitely one of those stamps that needs and requires that either double or even sometimes triple stamping. Now I have made, I have used uh, VersaFine ink on this particular case because this is not one that you have to color in with Copics or anything like that because this stamp set is like that. I have gone ahead and done VersaFine with this particular stamp pad and I found that that works very well as well because it's a little bit more intense black. There are some intense blacks as well. Ultinew, I believe, has a nice black, and um, I've used the Hero Arts black as well. So, again, I'm not really seeing much overbleed, which is nice. And it looks like it's getting that center stuff that needs to be done. So I think this is going to take at least one more stamp. And like I said, these particular stamps are very much, they very much require two and sometimes even three stamps. I like it. It's pretty good. I could probably stamp this one one more. Let's try that one more time. See how that looks. Just see if we can do one more. And then we'll move it down. Pick it up. Yes. Okay. So this is actually really very good. I'm I'm liking this. The black is pretty intense and it looks like it's doing really well. So again, the technique is different. The technique for this is going to be different than one any kind of hinged stamping tool. Some of you may even have the Tim Holtz stamping tool. They don't sell it anymore in the United States because of copyright, but you may have it if you were um, not in the U.S., or maybe you got it prior to when they, they did the, the, um, the shutting down of being able to use that. Let me get out my little elephants. I love this My Favorite Things stamping set. It's one of my favorites. I literally use it all the time. So let's take a look, and we'll do some little elephants. I will say that I am pretty surprised with this stamping platform just because I feel like, it, you know, again, I, I think Misty is definitely the indie, industry standard. It's really your, your Cadillac of stamping tools. But not all of us can afford to have a lot of different Mistys. Um, there I know that some of the creators that are out there, they have a Misty for each of their different projects or they'll preload stamps into some of their misties and and leave them for a while while they're you know continuing to finish that project that's just not something that right now i have the the bandwidth to do so it's one of those things that if i wanted to have an extra stamping platform to be able to do some stamping with outside of maybe a project that's in my misty or or that I'm doing this may be an option because it's a it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to and I'm actually liking this fact that this is a separate item this reminds me like I said a little bit of that Fisker's stamping platform that had the foam on it that's actually a pretty good that's the thing about my favorite thing stamps is they're usually pretty clean. I am going to go ahead and just because I want to make sure that this is working well, I am going to go ahead and double stamp, even though the, the image really doesn't need it. But I'm going to go ahead and do it just because I want to do it. So again, I'm placing it there. I'm just placing it. And there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a distance there. And this little swivel thing that you push down is what's going to cause it to hit the paper. So as long as you don't push down, you can actually place it and you're good. And then you can push it down and do your, your rubbing to make sure that it's even. So we'll see how it goes. And again, it darkened up the line and the lining of, up before it is, is fairly perfect. You know, I, I think that this has been a pretty good, it's a pretty good thing. So, I mean, if you take a look, again, the only real problem that I'm seeing, and this may be user error too, is I don't particularly like how it is with the thicker stamps. But the Lawn Fawn did really well, the, the triple printing on the Ultra New did really well, and the My Favorite Things. So I'm, I'm really liking this. 
So let's take a look. Let me clean this up and kind of gather my thoughts on this and think about my final parting thoughts. Cleaning seems to be pretty good. They seem to be doing pretty well on the cleaning. I'm pretty impressed with that. And we'll just put these aside. And let's see how it's doing. I like the little tabs, the fact that there's sort of substantial tabs. They're not, the plastic isn't wonderful and the magnets are not, I don't think they're quite as powerful as you would get with your Misty. So I think there, that's something to keep, to keep in mind. But overall, the things I really like about it, I like the fact that it lines it up for you very, very well. If you want to, you can keep it in this channel or the fact that you can completely pull it out. I really like that. Uh, the magnets are good. That could be a little bit stronger. That's fine. Um, it, it's pretty compact. It does have the no stick skip on the end. It's fairly substantial as far as it doesn't look like it's going to crack or break super easily. It doesn't have a hinge that's going to wear out. I've actually had some of my hinges wear out on some of my other stamping platforms. Not the Misty, I will qualify that, but I've had some hinges wear out on the other. Um, so I really like it. I would say the only real con that I have for this is, is if you are someone that uses the rubber stamps that have the, the foam associated with them, you may not care for that with this. This makes it a little bit more challenging. But for the, the basic cling stamps, these do really well. The clear stamps, these, this does really well. And I think it's an alternate uh, option for you if you're looking for something that's not quite as expensive as the Misty. It is a little bit different technique to do your stamping, but there's a great option for you, especially for travel. So I'm really pleased and I'm going to continue to use this. I'm going to be uh, happy to recommend it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you are interested in seeing more from Dory Creative, please smash the subscribe and the like button below. Have a wonderful day and remember, always be creative.